So one of the things that I've always been quite interested in is the fact that most programming languages have English as their syntax. This has always interested me because I always thought, what if you weren't a native English speaker? What if you were learning English as a second language, or even if you didn't know English as a second language? What would the difficulties be in learning programming? Would it even be feasible in any way? And this is especially true with shorthand. So the way that we shorten integer down to int, these things are a lot more difficult to understand when you're not a native English speaker. And it started to make me think, why was English such a dominant thing in programming language? And are there even any programming languages that aren't using an English syntax? So for most technology, it's been developed in a country that has a dominant English speaking population. So think of the United States, the UK. So these two countries alone, one of them created the World Wide Web and the other one created the Internet. This combined with entertainment being quite dominated in English, um, it's no surprise that English became the dominant syntax for programming languages. And this is even true for programming languages that weren't even written in English-speaking countries. For example, Python, which was created by a Dutch engineer. Ruby on Rails is another programming language and framework, should I say, that was created in a foreign country. It was created in Japan. And the reason they chose to use English syntax is, well, there's many reasons. The most notable one being that English has kind of become a lingua franca between software developers. If you're developing across many teams and across many countries, then it's simple to use a single language that each person understands and they can communicate in. And this de facto lingua franca has just became English throughout the years. There have been two main strategies for trying to deal with this, because learning a programming language in a language that you don't know, such as English, can be difficult. Especially if you're in a country where English just isn't widely spoken. It's learned through education and you don't even really need it in college. One approach to this was to create localized programming languages, which is what Citrine is, or however that's pronounced, I think it's French. And what this does is it actually changes its syntax depending on what the user's language is. So instead of writing print or, you know, function or func or whatever, it changes its syntax depending on what the language the user is using. And in many ways, it's used as a kind of a go-to way of uh, bridging this gap between language users. However, there are a lot of problems with a localized programming language like this. So the main thing is if you're in a gigantic organization, you can't really get away with this. Like the code base needs to be in one specific language. You can't just have everyone like writing in different languages and contributing to a code base. Even if it can compile and work the same way, it's a nightmare trying to debug and trying to review code like this. So you might be thinking, is there any real reason why we would create a programming language in a different language syntax. And the primary reason is almost always education. So it's very difficult to teach a child a programming language and for to have them understand it if they don't actually understand English themselves. If you've ever looked at something like assembly language, then it's quite difficult to actually understand what's going on unless you understand what each instruction means. This is the most notable example since pop and add and move, they're not necessarily, it's quite hard to understand exactly what's going on unless they're explained to you what each operation does. And so for this reason, especially in languages that are quite different to English and that have a large population, there have been some program languages that have been developed. So one notable one is Qualb. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that wrong or not, but it's the Arabic word for heart. And it actually uses the Arabic alphabet in order to program, which looks so much more cool than the Latin alphabet. It is quite aesthetically pleasing, but it does run into other difficulties, especially when you realize that you need a special Arabic keyboard, which in countries like Qatar and everything like that, that is quite common, I've been told. But the encoding scheme is quite different as well. So it was a significant engineering feat to actually develop this in the first place. And it's primarily used for education for young people uh, who speak Arabic as a first language.
So another notable example of this is the easy programming language, which is written in Mandarin. Now I had to go into the Wayback Machine in order to get this website up because I don't think an English version is actually available anymore. Maybe for whatever reason they stopped selling to English speakers, I don't know. But essentially, yeah, it's a programming language, but its syntax is created in the Mandarin alphabet, which is really significant when you think about it, because in Mandarin, it's notoriously difficult for its alphabet. Essentially, every single word is expressed with a different character. They don't have to set alphabet letters in the same way we have in Latin scripts. So developing a programming language in this was, again, a great engineering feat, and it's quite significant. And I'm not surprised that it's been undertook in a country like China that has, what, a billion speakers, two billion or something like that. So there was quite obviously a demand for a programming language in this country so that people could learn it better. And they probably develop in this language as well. The thing that those two previous languages had in common is that they were spoken by millions, enough billions of people across the world. However, there is one programming language that was developed, and it was developed in Gaelga, which is the Irish language. Now, this is significant because there's, I think there's less than 2 million native population speakers. Um, there's very few people who speak it fluently, even in Ireland. It's considered an endangered language, and it was essentially just created for the sake of keeping the language open, allowing people to learn it through Irish. And the creator himself uh, said that he wanted to create it mainly so he could relearn some Irish that he might have forgotten or something in school. What it essentially is, is a Node.js library that just uh, uses certain Irish words instead of the typical syntax. So it's quite similar to JavaScript. And so, yeah, we have grieve, which is the Irish word for write. And we can print out anything to describe it. So just say... Hello, YouTube. And this should go. I'm actually kind of curious if it'll work if it doesn't have the fada in it, because I don't think I can even do that on my thing. Oh, OK, so you actually need to be able to write fadas in it, which is a bit of a downside, but what can you do? But yeah, this really stuck out in my head because there's no real reason to do this. Like, I mean, I refuse to believe that there's enough demand in the programming world to need Irish as a programming language, but it was developed anyway, and it's just super interesting. So it's called Satanta, which is a figure in Irish folklore, um, kind of a weird story. He killed a hound with a hurl, and a, yeah, I'm not going to get into it. But it's also what, but at one stage it actually was a common name in Ireland as well for men. So yeah. Uh, if we get to 1 million subscribers, I'll definitely do a Satanta tutorial, I swear. It has been quite interesting to find out that other coding and programming languages have been created in non-English. Because it's always something that really stuck out of my head, like, how difficult is that? Is it even feasible if you're not a native English speaker? And so there's probably a lot of you who don't speak English as a first language, and I'm curious to hear from you. Was it difficult when you were learning programming languages like Python or C++ or whatever, because they had an English syntax? Did you learn it first in school before you were even given the option of programming? So yeah, I am curious to hear what your experience is with this. But yeah, this is just a quick video exploring the subject. Uh, until then, I'll see you next time.